All right, so let's continue with this problem that we have here, trying to find volume under a surface. So how do we, how do we set this up? What's the, what's the right approach? Well, let's look at that rectangle, right? So let's, let's call this thing maybe R. What does it look like? Well, in, in the XY plane, let's ignore the Z coordinate for a minute. We've got our, our A, we've got our B, We've got our C, we've got our D, and we use those to get our rectangle, right? So here's, here's our rectangle R. And, and we say, okay, how do we do this approximation by boxes? Well, we, we do what we know. And what we know is we know how to do these partitions, right? So we've, we've already sort of partitioned the, this X interval, right? A, going from A to B, so we've introduced these points, X1, X2, and so on. So we've, you know, let's, let's redraw those. So we've got these points in here, same as we had before. And, you know, you can do the same thing for the Y coordinates. So we can say, well, let's say C is going to be Y0, and we'll introduce points Y1, Y2, and so on, up to, well, maybe we don't use the same number of points that we used over there, so maybe we'll call this one, say, YM, right? And that'll be the last point equal to D, right? So now we've, we've divided things up here. So we've put in some points there. And, and now you can see that, that these two partitions, what they do is they take your big rectangle and they divide it up into a bunch of little rectangles, right? Those markings there going across, we have these markings here, right? So now your big rectangle becomes a bunch of little rectangles, right? And, and what we get are, well, there's a whole bunch of them. So we get these rectangles. Uh, we might call them, say, R, I, J, right? And so this is, it's going to look, if we wanted to specify what it is, it's still a product of two intervals. Looks something like that, right? Where i is between 1 and n, j is between 1 and m. So there's m times n of these rectangles, right? So you get a whole bunch of rectangles, right? Um, and then you can kind of do the same process of, well, these rectangles are going to be the, the base of our boxes the same way these intervals were the base of those rectangles there, right? So the next step is that you choose some points, right? And so we're going to choose points. Maybe we'll call them uh, x, i, j, y, i, j, right? One in, one in each rectangle. So we, we choose points, something like this. I'm not going to draw all of them. And we use those points to get the height of our, of our box, right? So we're going to plug those into our function. And so we get, uh, we get boxes with volumes like this. So we get, we get a volume that looks something like this. Well, we take the, the area of the base, right? So the area of the base, which is, which is going to be delta xi times delta yj, right? The length of this interval times the length of that interval. And now we multiply by the height, right? So we take our point, we plug it into our function. That gives me the z coordinate. So now I've got my x times y times z. That's the volume of my box, right? But this is one box. We have m times n such boxes. So if we want to, if we want to get the total volume, we have to add this up. So we have to sum say i going from 1 to n. Um, but that only takes care of, of one direction. We've also got a sum in the other direction. So let's say j going from 1 to m, right? We've got to account for all of those. So you get this sort of double sum. And as you might guess, if you want to define the integral, you define sort of a, a double integral over the rectangle f of x, y. 
And we might write DA, A for area. So we think of this as integrating with respect to area, if you like. Um, so we define it as a limit. I'm not going to get, I, it's not important for us to know the details of exactly how, but it's a limit of these sums, right? Um, so so the, what you do is you take the limit over all such sums as sort of the size of the biggest rectangle goes to zero, right? So of course, if the biggest rectangle goes to zero, all the smaller ones go to zero as well, right? So, and of course, the way that you, you shrink the size of these rectangles is by adding more rectangles, which means adding more points to both of the partitions, the partition for the x's and the partitions for the y's, right? So the same thing that you do in, in one variable. You keep increasing the number of points in your partition. That increases the number of, well, rectangles in this case, boxes in this case. You add up the result, and you look to see if there's some sort of limiting value. If you get a limiting value, that's going to be your integral. OK. Um, so that's how you would define the integral. Um, from this definition, you can derive a number of properties. You can find these listed in the textbook. Um, because you can look them up in the textbook, I don't think we need to spend time on the video writing them all out. But you have the properties that you might expect, thing, and a lot of them are analogous to what you have in one variable. So things like, you know, if you're doing the integral of f plus g, that's going to be the same as the integral of f plus the integral of g. If there's a constant inside, you can bring it out. All the usual properties that you might expect, um, they also apply, right? Um, OK, so, so this is the idea with defining the integral over a rectangle. Um, this doesn't really get us anywhere as far as knowing how to compute the integral. And it also doesn't address what we might do if we are trying to integrate over something which is not a rectangle. So these are ideas that we're going to have to develop uh, in further videos.